Hey guys, Will here, and uh, you know, if any of y'all get upset at the videos that I choose to make, just know my videos are not on one subject. My YouTube channel is not just for one subject, so you can, you know, delete me or whatever, but I personally think that my opinions on this subject right here, this is the common core, are very applicable. So why am I talking about this? Well, I think there's a big misunderstanding with the Common Core, um, especially with Common Core math. This is where this is where the biggest um, misunderstanding comes from. Why? Because there's such a change from regular math to Common Core math. So what is Common Core? It's an abbreviated term used to refer to the Common Core Standards Initiative, a set of standards for English and math written and copyrighted by the National Governor, Governors Association and the Council of Chief State School Officers backed and funded by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. These standards were adopted sight unseen by 46 states in exchange for race to the top money or a waiver from no child left behind. Now, I do know that here in Texas, it was often criticized that this no child left behind actually left behind a lot of students. So their initiative, this no child left behind, did not do what it was intended and it was making a big problem with the school. Now. Why do I think, and, and, and this guy here is a doctor, he's giving this speech on the Common Core. Why do, you, why do I think that I'm able to talk about this? Well, first, uh, one, big, one big part of the Common Core is this uh, standardized testing, okay? So we can look, uh, we can look here, here's Louie, whoops, sorry about that. Louis C.K. talking about his Common Core math. My kids used to love math, now it makes them cry. Thanks, standardized testing and Common Core. It's pretty funny. Standardized testing. So, I graduated high school in 1997. This put me in the grade that was testing the standardized testing for you guys. Um, I know those tests came and uh, became standard and there's uh, there's some controversy with that, but we did not have Common Core in my school. We did not teach Common Core math. So why do I think I'm applicable for talking about Common Core? Very simply, it's math. Yes, I was on the math team in school. Now, and I'm, I'm talking high school. Now, math team was very important because of this. They had a, um, there were several several competition types, right? One was called number sense. One was called calculator, right? This number sense here, uh, that to me is common core. And now what do I mean by that? What I mean is that number sense competitions was all about, hey, let's try to find the quickest method of calculation possible with the least errors. Okay, so why would we jump to Common Core? Why, won't we, why don't we just calculate like normal? Okay, calculate like normal is like this. 500 times 1 equals 500. Okay, very simple. You multiply the 1 all the way through. It's just linear. So normal math is linear, right? Well, Common Core is non-linear. What I mean by this, imagine trying to multiply 499 times, where's my 
times t. There it is. Same place it always was, right? Times 50. That gets a little more difficult when we're doing normal linear math. But common core in number sense tells me that this is the same exact thing as 500 times 50 minus 1 times 50. Yes. And there should be parentheses there. But this is nonlinear, right? So common core, everything that I have ever seen about common core are things that they taught in number sense for how to how to think logically in your head and how to take a complex problem and simplify it. It's not about not using a calculator. It's not about changing up the way everybody does everything. It's about a quicker and easier method with less errors. Yes, I know everybody has a calculator. Everybody has a cell phone. But that's a crutch. You don't need a crutch. Now, now, let me just say, I don't know that I agree with everything in the Common Core, especially the Common Core Science. I have not studied it very much. The math has gotten a lot of publicity for just being backwards. I disagree. It is everything that I have seen on Math Team. Now, I had a friend growing up. His name was Johnny. And uh, he was about the same grade as me. Well, he's now a teacher. And this teacher now teaches on the Math Team. So I asked him, I'm like, you know, just curious in your opinion now from Common Core. Because, and I told him, my opinion was that Common Core is teaching math team logic to the schools. And I told him that, you know, I also believe that's where this backlash comes from, is that these children's parents are not used to these theories and not used to this nonlinear thinking, so it's abstract for them. Since it's abstract, they rebel and they think it's stupid and there's no way this works, or they just don't understand it themselves. Well, this math team coach tells me, yeah, you know, it took me a bit and then once it clicked, and he says, now I just totally get it. It totally makes sense. You know what else he said? He said, I wish I learned this in school myself. Huh. So, you can go ahead and you can listen to teachers talk bad about Common Core, right? Like this one's going to talk bad about Common Core right now. They're saying it's dumbing down. It's one size fits all. They want to say it's not critical thinking. It's not logic. It's not higher order. But they are absolutely wrong. It is more logical. It is more critical thinking. And it is to help the students. Now, is the common core being hijacked and being taught wrong in schools? Possibility. But I'm talking about Common Core as it sits, as these math teachers object to it. I just was not having a good day, and I wasn't wearing my math lab shirt, and so I just like set everything into my phone. So I'm just going to play that for you, and then just talk for a minute. So pardon the rant, but um, I'm very passionate, so what can I say? I mean, take it or leave it. Here's the thing, you want to talk about dumbing down the schools in America? You want to talk about a one-size-fits-all education? Well, if you don't teach conceptually using models, and you don't have students defending their reasoning, critiquing the reasoning of others, if you just have them sitting in a chair, bowing down to their masterful teacher, telling them the steps, spoon-feeding them how to do every little thing instead of thinking outside the box, thinking on their own, and coming up with algorithms and discovering them and exploring
behind them. Then you, my friend, have a one-size-fits-all education. Then you, my friend, have created a robot that is only good for, in my opinion, yes, I can do the steps. Yes, I can follow your directions. Yes, I will bow down. Yes, I will do what you told me to do. As opposed to someone that is working collaboratively with someone, thinking outside the box, creating, investigating, critiquing the reasoning, justifying theirs, using visual conceptual ideas, thinking outside the box, challenging others, having discourse in the math classroom and math talks. This is not dummying down in America, but challenging to be the leaders of our future. Our next generation, not to be the ones that are more like a robot. You know. Okay, guys. So there's uh, this opinion of this math teacher, and let, here's some points that she made. Uh, she thinks that uh, you're not defending their own reasoning. It's not conceptual. You're not thinking outside the box. You don't have creative outlets, and they're not discovering things that uh, concept that Common Core is dumbing things down. It's one size fits all, and it's creating robots that. All they're doing is uh, following steps and directions. Uh, they're opposed to collaboration, and they're not thinking outside the box. Uh, that they need to be challenging others in discourse. Now, this to me is a 100% misunderstanding of the common core. If you want to talk about dumbing down, and you want to talk about one size fits all, then you are talking about our old math instruction. If you want to talk about creating robots, you are talking about our old math instruction, where there is one way to do it and one right way. This new Common Core explains that there are multiple ways to get to the same problem. So how can this be one size fits all? How can this be creating robots when they say there's more than one way? So if two students have more than one way to figure out a problem, how can you not defend your reasons? How can this not be thinking outside the box? How can students not discover new ways of thinking of things of math? To me, ma'am, teacher, and it, it's worth noting that a teacher can have a degree in any subject. So we must be very careful who's opinion we are taking as fact. So I want to take a look at the standards uh, and the comparison of common core new versus old. So here are some examples on old and Please, go with me through these and you can tell me which one you think breeds robots, which is critical thinking. So here's the old sort of problem. Each shirt's $4. How much do three shirts cost? And, of course, it's really simple. 4 times 3, or 4 plus 4 plus 4, or 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. Pretty simple. Um, they call that a count-all strategy. Now, Common Core Math, it says each shirt has six buttons. How many buttons are needed to make six shirts? So, I don't see how there's much of a difference here. That's just six times seven. How could that not still be the count-all? So, I, they, they, they simplify this a little much where there is no difference here. But let's look at middle school. Buys 40 apples at 30, 35 cents. She eats two apples and sells the rest for 45. How much does she make? So you obviously have to subtract two. We're at 38. And then she sells them for 45 cents. Well, you can tell the difference is 10 cents. 38 apples at 10 cents profit. $3.80. So how much money does she make? Well, question, how much does the government take out of it? No, just simple arithmetic, right? Very simple. Donna buys some apples at 35 cents. She eats two apples, sell the rest 40 cents each. So she makes $4.40. How many apples did she buy? So here it's kind of non linear. You got a 10 cents an apple. So she makes 
40 cents, so that's 44 apples, but you have to remember she ate two of them, so the answer would be 46. And it's just kind of common core is throwing that, making you kind of go backwards with it. Just This is linear, normal, very simple, and this is just a little bit more obscure. Still the same math, but it's a little more complex, a little more real-world situation. Bird flew, bird flew 20 miles in 100 minutes. How long did it take to fly 6 miles? Okay, well, what's 20 divided by 6? And then divide 100 by that much. Very simple. right? 20 miles in 100 minutes at this speed, how long would it take to fly 6 miles? Same exact part. But how far would the bird fly in 15 minutes? Okay, so then you have to determine... Well, what's 15 minutes is one-sixth of a mile. What's one-sixth of 20? Okay. How fast is the bird flying in miles per hour? Okay, so then you have to determine 20 miles, and they give you 100 minutes. Well, that right there per hour. Now, if you don't... See, putting little things in here like this where they can trip you up, where if you don't remember that this is over an hour, this is an hour and 40 minutes. Then this right here will get messed up. And this is middle school, guys. Okay, and then what is the bird's pace in minutes per mile? Well, that's very easy. That's just a normal calculation. But is this one right here, miles per hour, that kind of gets them, gets them deducing and thinking logically and critically thinking and not breeding robots? Okay, let's look at high school. Now, it's simple algebra. 3 times y minus 1 equals 8. So 3y minus 1 equals 8. 3y, sorry, 3y minus 3. So 3y is 11. y is 11 thirds. Okay? Simple. Uh, but then this asks, what are two different equations with the same solution as 3y minus 1 equals 8? Well, okay. y minus 1 equals 8 thirds. Or 3y minus 3 equals 8, or 3y equals 11. Those are all the three same equations. Or you can, you can obviously multiply by 4 on both sides, or add 6, or something like that. It comes out exactly the same, but it's critical thinking, reasoning. It's non-robotic thinking. What are some different ones? Can you come with some logic and make your own stuff up? So how she thinks this is not thinking outside the box, how this is creating robots and how it's one size fits all, I completely disagree. And I think there's a major disruption with this and that people are using Common Core to lose faith in our education. This is not about following steps and directions. There are no directions for this. There are no directions for coming up with your own equations. She's saying it's not outside the box thinking. How can it not be when you need to make up your own equations to satisfy the answer? So, I just wanted to make this video and let y'all know that uh, not everybody out there on the internet knows what they're talking about, even if they're teachers. Um, even if they're math teachers and they sound like what they're thinking of. Like, sorry, it sounds like they know what they're talking about. But do they really have the right conception of what Common Core is and what it's teaching? Obviously, when someone says that Common Core is not reasoning, not critical thinking, I greatly disagree. So guys, I appreciate it. You can go ahead and listen to all these doctors and stuff like that out here. Or you can look for, you can look at Common Core yourself. Yes, it is a little abstract, but it's beneficial to your kids, at least the math side. So thanks guys. Appreciate it. We'll be out.